with a sprain, it'll be okay. I will give everything I have for your youth, and that includes my elbow apparently, but I'll be all right. I was afraid one of the youth would get hurt, so I hurt myself instead. <laughs> all right, so we have several ways to show hospitality coming up, and so I want you to make, make you aware of those. Um, first, we have a way to show love to our members who aren't able to attend with us anymore. We have the uh, Faith Friends Ministry that has just started up, and that is a ministry where you simply go visit or make a phone call to one of our members that can attend with us on Sunday mornings once a month, and you can do that by yourself, with a friend, with a spouse, however you want to do it, just pick a person that you discuss with Miss Janice Call, Reverend Janice Call, excuse me, and you go visit them at least once a month and make a phone call, and that way they know that we still love them and pray for them and wish that they could be with us when they get better. So please keep in mind Faith Ministry, and if you need to, uh, contact Reverend Janice Call about further information. Uh, we have other opportunities for hospitality. Um, it seems crazy, but August 16th is EIU's move-in day, which is just a few weeks away. And we would like to show those people that are moving in over their hospitality. And so we have gotten some water bottles, or we will get some water bottles, and we would like to distribute them to them. So if you have a cooler with wheels or a wagon, Wagon, any cooler that can go in said wagon and would like to help us out on August 16th we'll be meeting here at the church uh, time is yet to be determined to hand out some water bottles and on those water bottles we have placed our information so that they know when we worship here and when they worship at the Wesley Foundation so if you'd like to help us out with that ministry uh, please see me or Jessica or I believe there's a sign-up sheet out at the information center if you'd like to do that as well um, let us know if you can help us out on August 16th on August 19th, we're going to be having Rally Day here at the church, and that is a full church event, children, families, and we're inviting people over from Eastern Illinois as well, and we will have food, we will have games and activities, and we will have a concert. There will be a bluegrass group coming in to uh, give us a concert. Uh, Julianne Sharp has arranged that for us, so uh, you'll be hearing more information about that, but we need supplies for that, so there's uh, information information out at the information center about that as well and so if there's not see me or Jessica and we can get you onto the right track um, but so August 19th will be rally day and that will start uh, and that starts from and that'll be from 5 to 7 we have the time set on that so rally day August 19th 5 to 7 let us know how you can help us out and um, we are going to be doing a backpack blessing on August 12th. I'm sorry, children, you have to go back to school. Parents, you can all cheer now. Um, so August 12th is the Sunday before every, uh, all the uh, K through 12s go back to school. So bring yourself, bring your backpack, and we would like to bless the backpack and you for a great school year. So spread the word. August 12th will be backpack blessing. Thank you. Let's stand together in harder posture as we worship God on this Sabbath day. Our hearts are steadfast, O God. Our hearts are steadfast. We will sing Awake, awake, my soul. Awake, O harp and lyre. We will awake We will give thanks to you, O God, among the peoples. We will sing praises to you. For your steadfast love is great to the heavens. Your faithfulness is greater to the clouds.
Good morning. <laughs> Generous God, whose glory is beyond the reach of our imaginations and from whom comes every gift and every kindness, we are moved to share, deliver us from the limitations we impose on our own humanity. Test us, challenge us, feed us, that our eyes may be open to realize the bounty of grace we receive from your hand. We have come to discover the riches we did not know we possessed. We are here to offer our best for all. Use us, we pray, to accomplish far more than we can ask or imagine. All glory be to you, amazing God, in this and every hour, forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture this morning is taken uh, from John 6, 1 through 21, and in your pews, uh, it's on page 97. However, I'm reading from the King James Version. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the miraculous signs he had performed on the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover feast was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Eight months' wages would not buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and the men, men sat down, about 5,000 of them. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the miraculous sign that Jesus did, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who has come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. Jesus walks on the water. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake where they got into the boat and set up across the lake for Capernaum. By now it was dark, and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing, and the waters grew rough. When they had rowed three or three and a half miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat. Walking on the water, they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Don't be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading. It's the word of God for the people of God.
invite the uh, children to follow Jessica to Children's Church and then follow her back here at the end as we uh, sing the song together. Let us pray. God, sometimes the sea is frightening and the storm is heavy and the wind is blowing and the boat is rocking and the waves are pushing and pulling and tugging. And we need an anchor to keep us safe and strong. So let your word and our words be that anchor. And when all of my words have slipped away, let that which remains with us be your living word, who is Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Not long before I left Champagne first, a woman came to me and she said, I have something I need to tell you uh, while I still have the chance to do so. And so she proceeded to inform me that her young daughter had said to her, uh, I'm going to miss Pastor Tom uh, because his sermons are interesting and I listen all the way through, which is a really wonderful comment from anybody, especially uh, from a kid. <laughs> Not to mention more than enough affirmation that I probably need to receive, um, even without the rest. And the rest was this. The rest was, uh, for communion, he always gives big pieces of bread. <laughs> So tell a pastor he gives big pieces of bread and that you like it, and uh, chances are pretty good he will chew on that for a while and uh, have something to say. So that's what I did, and that's what I'm doing. And uh, here is what I say. I say this. I say, I give big pieces because you can never give or get too much grace. I never, ever, ever want anybody, anywhere, anytime, for any reason to believe that there's not enough Jesus or enough God to go around. And yet I also know this from the part of my life I really don't want you to know about, even though you're going to know about it now, uh, at least until you forget it, if you do forget it. What I also know is that in my life, in my real life, and I mean this metaphorically, I don't mean it literally about communion bread. In my life, if you hurt me, or disappoint me, or, or make me too mad, or if I'm offended by you, or I think you somehow deserve less and not more, it is ever so possible that I will give you smaller pieces, not of bread, but of love. Smaller pieces of love. Maybe some of you can say that too, but I won't come around and ask you, I promise. So Father Donald Neary wrote these words. He said, A mother and small child stood in line for communion. The child was too young for communion, so just trailed up by the hand and then looked up at the minister with a big open mouth. And the gospel came alive with the need of the people for food and mouths open for the bread of life. Only in the face of the child was the mouth so open. But aren't we all gasping for the bread of life? So the large crowds are back today, following Jesus around, wanting something that Jesus has to give and that they think maybe they can get. The story is John's version of what the lectionary skipped last Sunday in Mark's Gospel, the feeding of the 5,000. The time is almost Passover, John is sure to tell us. Passover is the remembrance of how God freed the people of Israel from bondage in Egypt. And so during Passover, every good child of Israel would have thoughts of freedom on her mind. The story today is a lot like that story. The people wonder, where are we ever going to get bread? And God sends bread from heaven. And I wonder, uh, who among that crowd wants to be free? And what kind of free do they want to be? And with just what bread do they hunger to be fed? So Jesus says to Philip, presumably a local, he says, uh, where do you go to buy bread around here? To which Philip answers, what are you talking about? There's no way. Half a year's wages. 
half a year's worth of what one of these people makes would never be enough to give everybody even a crumb. In other words, it's not possible. It won't work. There's not enough. They can't be fed. Which is what happens, right? That's what we do. Whatever it is, it won't be enough. More for you means less for me, whether it be food or money or resources or love or acceptance or, or forgiveness or understanding or kindness or time or generosity or whatever else we think is in short supply. And so we dole it out with caution, carefully calculating who deserves and who doesn't, who's worthy and who's not. So I wonder why Andrew even draws attention to this little boy with his five barley loaves and two fish. Sometimes there's just not enough, isn't that right? Facts are facts. Five barley loaves and two fish. So I wonder whether Andrew is pointing out how little the boy has when he says, what are they among all these people? Because it's true. Because he's right, he is. What are five barley loaves and a couple of fish when you've got a big crowd of 5,000 who've shown up completely unannounced and unexpectedly? It's not rocket science. There's just not enough. Barley, by the way, was the cheapest bread and it was fed typically to animals and the very poor. So you've got five loaves of the bread nobody wants. Or is it more like this? Does Andrew perceive the potential for more? There's a boy here with five barley loaves and two fish, but uh, what, what are they among all these people? Maybe Andrew believes something. Maybe he believes the bread and the fish might be something after all. Just maybe, just maybe he believes that because of Jesus, because of something holy, because of something much bigger than himself or that boy or that whole crowd, something is possible beyond what appears to be the bottom line. What I do know is this, I know that with Jesus' help, that boy's offering becomes a big piece. It becomes everything that's needed, more than enough. And I know this, I notice that the small ones, the little ones, the weak ones, the frequently unnoticed ones, those are the ones, I know they are often the ones who offer the biggest pieces of all. So um, what happened? What happened here? Did Jesus do some sort of divine hocus pocus and, and suddenly a little bit turned into a lot? If it looks that way to you, that's just fine with me. Or did that boy share everything he had and then another one shared and then another one shared and then another one and another and another until it turned out everybody really had enough after all and it took Jesus' instructions to make all that happen. If it looks that way to you, that's just fine with me. What I do know is that you and I, uh, who bothered to get up today and get out of our comfy houses and come to church, we all have our mouths open, wide open, gasping for the bread of life. Where love and acceptance and self-worth are concerned, we all need big pieces and not leftovers. And the invitation from the scripture today is to take the risk of believing that Christ is present in all places and in all times and in all circumstances and to live as though there is more than enough 
rather than discriminately handing out tiny portions of grace and love and welcome only to the ones we happen to notice or only to the ones who make us feel good or only to the ones we believe are deserving. Who needs a big piece here today at Wesley? Who is it that might be struggling with fragile health or a shaky marriage or a sick spouse or a hard job or a kid they don't know what to do with or, or some grief that's nearly impossible to bear or a secret they have to carry all by themselves or a terrible cloud hanging overhead? or some dreaded loneliness, or an addiction that's spun out of control, or a crisis of faith, or that desperate feeling that nobody really sees, or nobody cares. Who here really wants to be free? And what kind of free do they want to be? And with just what bread are they longing to be fed? And will you be the one, will you be the one who dares to believe that with God's help, you have enough to feed them? If somebody walks into Wesley Church today for the first time, for the very first time, will they only get a tiny bit of welcome? Or will they get a big piece of welcome? And do they want to be free? And what kind of free do they want to be? And with what kind of bread are they longing and desperate and hungry to be fed? And will you be the one who dares to believe that with God's help, you have enough to feed them? And what about at home? Who needs big pieces at home? Who needs big pieces at school? Who needs a big piece at work? Do they want to be free? And uh, what kind of free do they want to be? And with what kind of bread are they longing and yearning to be fed? And will you be the one who believes that with God's help you have everything you need to feed them? And what about me? What about the preacher? What about the guy saying all this? What about the ones who hurt me or disappoint me or make me mad, too mad, so mad, or offend me, or who I think deserve less and not more? What about them? Do they really just want to be free? What kind of free is it that they want to be in? With what kind of bread do they long to be fed? And will I believe, will I dare to believe somehow that with God's help I have what it takes to feed them? Will I do it? Will I? Or am I just sure it's impossible? Am I just sure I don't have enough? Am I just sure that more for them means something is taken away from me? Six months wages is a lot, you know. It is. Pretty steep price. But then enter Jesus, who makes all the difference in the world today. Jesus who sees what's possible. Jesus who believes in our poor barley bread and our skimpy little supply of fish enough to say, bring it here. Bring what you've got. Bring it to me. Jesus, whose life and whose body were given completely holy, no holding back, broken into pieces that became the biggest pieces of all in order to be in flesh right here in this world, in person, with us, with us, with you and with me, the very God of gods, God who wants and loves and values every person, no exceptions. And that is the bread of life. 
That grace is the bread of life, the multiplication of God's love, of God's grace, the God who comes to where we are, even on the rough sea, saying, do not be afraid. The bread of life. Enough to go around. And you can never give too much of it. And you can never take too much of it. And aren't we all just gasping for this? Bread of life. All of us. Every single one of us. Aren't we? Aren't we? Let's pray. We are a hungry crowd, Lord, and we are longing for the bread of life underneath every hunger and every yearning. We want to be loved and we want to be accepted and we want to be forgiven and we want to be wanted and we want to be needed and we want to be long and we want to be yours. And today you feed us with that bread that assures us that we are loved and our deepest hunger is satisfied. And so we look around at this hungry world, at our hungry community, at this hungry church, and we know, we know that there is more power and more grace available to us than we ever calculate or imagine. That we imagine too small and we see too small and we do too small and we give too little sometimes and we need to draw, Lord, upon the grace and mercy that you've given us in abundance and feed each other well. So give us that power and give us grace to believe in all that is possible because of you. Loving God, we pray for this world and all people everywhere. We pray for those who have power that they might use it to um, lift others up, to raise them up, to be concerned for the good of all people. We pray for those who are weak and powerless for those who are struggling. And we pray for those who help, who hear your call, however it comes to them, whoever they may be, wherever they might be. We thank you for those who help them. We lift up our country, we lift up our community, we lift up Wesley Church and the ministry that we share. Use us and send us, we pray, fill us with the bread of life to share in abundance and hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, as you are reaching for your treasure, uh, I want to draw your attention to the chancel where you see the prayer shawls and prayer squares and gift baskets over which uh, we're going to pray uh, this morning. I'm going to see if I've got this right, and if I don't have it right, somebody will tell me later and I'll fix it next time. Uh, but uh, the prayer uh, shawls and squares uh, are always in Pastor Janice's office. And if there's somebody you know... Uh, 
uh, who needs to know they're loved, who needs to know they're prayed for, uh, because of any circumstance at all, you can come and get a prayer shawl or a prayer square. You can take it to them. And uh, we are grateful for the loving hands who have created those. And uh, also there are gift baskets. Those are already uh, spoken for. Every one of these is going to somebody who's ill or grieving or shut in or who in some way needs to know the love of Wesley Church and uh, more deeply the love that God has for them. And so every one of those already has a place to go. And uh, because we have so many willing volunteers, they all have have somebody to take them and we are very grateful for that. I want to invite you in this moment if you would simply extend an arm in the direction of these good works so that we can bless them together. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, you do uh, surround us like a blanket with care and love. And uh, in our time of need, we know that you love us and that you are around us and in us. We pray that uh, you would bless these blankets and shawls and squares and baskets. Bless those who made them and those who received them that together we may know more fully the love that you have, that uh, many may be comforted, and that in comforting others we may ourselves find comfort that comes only from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for the gifts you bring today. I invite us to offer them with glad hearts.
generous God. Take what we offer and multiply it. Take the grace that we are able to give and multiply it as well. Take all that we give and use it according to your will and do more than we believe is possible. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's turn in the back of your hymnals to page 887 for the affirmation. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. no, in all things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. That's all. That's all. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not nervous anymore. I just wanted to keep going. <laughs> <laughs>
now to the one who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish far more than we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations. Go in peace now with the blessing of God to love and serve the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.